Hello everyone and welcome back to the Central Network. This video is going to teach you how to play the Mercenary and Commander in the Arsenal and Gunnery Discipline Path. Chapters are available to you, so be sure to navigate to where you need to be. The video is separated appropriately with easy to understand segments that any new player can follow along with. For those of us that need the basics, this is a good place to start. The Mercenary and Commander classes are both mirrored. What this means is they have the same abilities but live on different factions. Republic or Imperial. Everything is the same in principle, however their abilities will have different names and animations. Also, in this case, they use different weapons. The Mercenary uses a dual pistol setup, while the Commander carries a huge cannon around. Obviously, these classes focus on ranged combat. However, they can also be a healer if they choose to, but that's for another video. Specifically, this video will teach you how to play the Arsenal Mercenary and the Gunnery Commander. Just so it's clear, this guide does assume you are level 75. You can still follow along if you are a lower level. Just keep in mind that you will be missing some important passives and abilities not yet available to you. This segment is going to go over the commander for the next few minutes. Search along the chapters line for the mercenary if that's what you are here for. First of all, I'd like to teach you some basic combos. Here are two of our abilities, Vortex Bolt and Grav Round. When you use Vortex Bolt, you will see your Grav Round ability proc. A proc means your ability has been buffed in some way. In this case, it allows us to cast our Grav Round instantly, whereas normally you would cast it over time. This is the most basic combo to learn. Next up, I'm gonna add Bolt Storm to the Quick Bar, along with Tech Overrides. Bolt Storm is a damage ability. Tech Override is an ability very important to you, it allows you to use any casted ability instantly. With the use of a skill point, you can get two charges of this. For example, Grav Round normally needs to be casted, but when using Tech Override, it allows you to use it instantly. It has a long cooldown though. So the next combo to learn is using Grav Round to remove the cooldown on your Bolt Storm. When you use Bolt Storm, it goes on cooldown for 14 seconds. But when you use Grav Round, it will remove the cooldown and allow it to be used again. As you can see, however, Grav Round can only refresh this cooldown once every 8 seconds. So you can't just spam it you'll need to use some other abilities in between to make up the time. But don't worry, that's what this video is here for. So now that you know the basic combos and how tech overrides work and how Bolt Storm can have its cooldown reduced, let's add some more abilities in. Next to go on to the quick bar is Demolition Round, High Impact Bolt and Electro Net. Electro Net is a cool ability that damages your targets over time while applying debuffs. It's just good general practice to use this ability on cooldown. Whenever you see it ready, just go ahead and press it. It's also useful for slowing enemies down. Now, Demolition Round is an ability I want you to get used to using alongside Vortex Bolt. They share a near same cooldown length and should be used together ideally. So whenever you use Vortex Bolt, just use Demolition Round immediately after. Do this every time and the cooldowns will be near perfect for you. High Impact Bolt is basically your hardest hitting ability when used properly. Observe on screen, every time you use your Grav Round, you'll gain two stacks of charged barrel, which will increase the damage of your next High Impact Bolt. But don't stop at two stacks. When you reach five stacks, which is the limit here, despite gaining two at a time, your next high impact bolt will proc visibly and deal maximum damage. Using high impact bolt at the wrong time can result in disappointing damage. All right, now we're gonna move on to forming this rotation. Let's add reserve power cell, supercharged gas, recharge cells, and hammer shot. So first of all, hammer shot is your weakest attack, but it also doesn't consume cells. So if you're depleted on cells and struggling, then use hammer shot until you're good and ready. However, if you are depleting your cells heavily, it means your rotation could be slightly off or you're missing some important abilities, which is what we'll move on to now. Recharge cells will grant you 50 energy cells over three seconds. This can be increased to 75 cells with a utility point. Reserve power cells allows you to use one move without charging you any cells. I would highly suggest you use this with bolt storm. 
as Bolt Storm uses a lot of cells. Both of these abilities should be used in your rotation to help you manage your cells. Not using them in long fights will almost definitely end up with you running out of cells all the time. Supercharged Gas is a buff that you will gain stacks of during combat. With the use of a utility point, you can have your regen ability give you the buff. This buff basically increases your damage and healing done. However, when it gets to 10 stacks, it unlocks our Supercharged Gas ability. Supercharged Gas will consume the buff and apply new buffs to you. It increases your armor penetration by 10%, which is obviously a good thing. And furthermore, Supercharged Gas will grant you 1% alacrity every time you use Vortex Bolt, Bolt Storm, or Grav Round, which in turn increases your damage. All right, so you may not realize it, but that is pretty much it. You've learned a lot already, and all you need to do now is put your newfound knowledge into some practice. But first, allow me to explain and demonstrate using all of this together. Our first demonstration will be our opener into combat. The first thing to do before entering combat is build your stacks of supercharge using your regen or just spamming your heal move. Once you're at 10 stacks, you're ready for combat. Begin by precasting Grav Round. A precast is just where you charge up the move right before combat starts. Then you're going to activate Supercharged Gas, followed by Vortex Bolt, then Demolition Round, and then Bolt Storm. We could go further, but to keep things simple, that was our opener. Pretty easy to remember. You could skip pre-casting grav round, but I wouldn't recommend doing that. Okay, so after our opener, all we need to do is manage our cells while remembering our combos. I'll explain as we go. Opener first, pre-cast the grav round, use supercharged gas, then vortex bolt, then demolition round, then bolt storm, opener finished. Now use grav round, see that bolt storm is ready again, so use that. Use another grav round, now our high impact bolt is propped and ready to use. And with that, you should be able to see how our rotation is formed. We basically rinse and repeat what we just did until our enemy is dead. Keep in mind your opener only needs to be used at the start of a fight, of course. Okay, so we're going to go over the opener and rotation one more time, except this time, I'm going to use all the abilities I've listed so far. Don't worry, I'm going to talk you through it still. So we use our opener as normal. This time we cast Electro Net before we continue. Then we use our propped Grav Round. Bot Storm again, and now this time we're going to hit Tech Overrides, which allows us to use Grav Round instantly. Makes for faster damage. Then we continue with our rotation. When we get to the next time we use Bot Storm, we're going to use Reserve Power Cell first, then Bot Storm to stop it charging its cells, and of course, the recharge cells ability you should use when you are near 20 to 25 cells remaining. Hopefully that was easy enough for you to understand. Let's move on to utility points. Alrighty then, so now we're going to go over the utility points that I took for my commander in gunnery. I would just like to point out that these are not by any means the only way that you should have your utility points. This is just where I like to have them right now, but there certainly are some other good ones to take, which I'm going to show you here. So starting off in the skillful tab, we have the cell capacitor point, and the description says recharge cells and now immediately recharges 15 additional cells and grants 10% alacrity for six seconds. This ties in with what I was talking about earlier when you could get the additional cells to use on your commander. The next point I've taken is efficient conversions. Removes the energy cell cost of concussion charge, concussive round, field aid, and cryo grenade. Just an overall use of passive to have um, just for your overall gameplay. There are some other points in here, just like this one here, which allows you to gain more cells when you are stunned, for example, which could be very useful to you. There is another one here, which will immobilize your target when you use explosive round. Some of these are more effective depending on the situation you encounter. So again, these aren't necessarily the way that you should have these all the time. You can change these depending on the kind of gameplay needs that you require. So the next point I've taken is chain gunnery. And this one is gonna increase the damage dealt by your hail of bolts by 25%. This is almost a must for any commander and mercenary, to be honest. It's just a very good damage boost to one of your AOE abilities here. It's this one here. If you can see it here on the right, it's the one that sprays everything. 
Okay, now in the Masterful tab, the first thing you're going to want to look at is Supercharged Reserves. This one reduces the cooldown of Field Aid and Disabling Shot by 3 seconds each. That's important because Disabling Shot is actually your interrupt something you'll be using often in PvE and PvP. In addition to this, you'll gain your 10 stacks of supercharge over the course of using your regen ability, which is recharge and reload. I spoke of this one earlier on. This is where you use your regen ability and it allows you to build your stacks just from using your regen. Pretty useful. Okay, my next point is going to be overclock. This one is quite important to the rotation that I showed you earlier in this video. Taking this point is basically a must. I'm going to have to stress that. So what Overclock is going to do is it will reduce the cooldown of Concussion Round and Tech Overrides by 15 seconds each. In addition, Tech Override grants a second charge, making your next two abilities with an activation time activate instantly. Now, we know that this is useful because when we use tech overrides, it allows us to use our grab round instantly. So having an extra charge of that just means that we can use it instantly twice instead, which is always a good thing. So yeah, it's quite important to our rotation as well and um, something you need to get used to. So I highly suggest taking this point. Okay, the next point here is going to be advanced align. This one increases the duration of hold the line by four seconds. Hold the line is one of your defensive moves, if you will. Um, which allows you to not be stunned and immobilized and, you know, run around without having anybody stop you sort of deal. Um, so having that last longer uh, can be very useful to your gameplay. There are some other useful points in here to take, so make sure you give these a scan and again, just apply whichever one you feel is going to be required from your upcoming gameplay. But the ones that I am showing you are going to be like a good overall point structure to use. Okay, so here in the last tab, we have the heroic tab, of course, and we're going to start with the one man army point. So this one will hinder the target with Electro Net. So this one basically says that when you use your Electro Net, it's going to increase your alacrity by 15% for nine seconds. Additionally, Supercharged Cell reduces cooldown of Adrenaline Rush by five seconds. This is a useful passive to have, especially with the alacrity bonus, because more alacrity basically means more DPS. The next one we have is a forced march. Now this one is basically a must as well. This one is going to allow you to use your bolt storm while moving. Not having this utility point means that every time you move while using bolt storm, you will stop casting it. And that's not something you want. You want to be able to run around and still be able to shoot stuff at the same time. So take that point. The next one I have is trauma stabilizers. Now this is definitely one that you can swap out for something else on here if it tickles your fancy. Um, but this is the one that I went with. So when I use my reactive shield, it's going to give me a passive of trauma stabilizers. So each time I receive direct damage, I'm going to get a stack, which is going to go up to a about 10 stacks and then once the shield has expired i'm going to be healed by four percent of my total hp for each stack that i had so that's about 40 percent hp uh, maximum health there that you can get back uh, so that's a pretty good defensive but again this can absolutely be swapped for something else in here so be sure to look at these and um, they're all very useful very very useful indeed there is one here called smoke screen which would be very useful for pvp especially if you're a very upfront damage dealer like me that's probably why i always die in pvp but anyways it grants you a smoke screen when you use your propulsion round which is your backwards moving ability um, like that which would be very useful for you in pvp for various reasons okay that's basically it for the utility point segment this segment is going to cover the mercenary until the end of the video search along the chapters line for the commander if that's what you're here for first of all i'd like to teach you some basic combos here are two of our abilities priming shot and tracer missile when you use priming shot you will see your tracer missile ability proc a proc means your ability has been buffed in some way. In this case, it allows us to cast our tracer missile instantly, whereas normally, you would cast it over time. This is the most basic combo to learn. Next up, I'm going to add Blazing Bolts to the quick bar, along with Power Surge. Blazing Bolts is a damage ability. Power Surge is an ability very important to you. It allows you to use any casted ability instantly. With the use of a skill point, you can get two charges of this. For example, Tracer Missile normally needs to be casted, but when using Power Surge, it allows you to use it instantly. It has a long cooldown though. So the next combo to learn is using Tracer Missile to remove the cooldown on your Blazing Bolts. When you use Blazing Bolts, it goes on cooldown for 14 seconds. But when you use Tracer Missile, 
it will remove the cooldown and allow it to be used again, as you can see. However, Tracer Missile can only refresh this cooldown once every 8 seconds, so you can't just spam it. You'll need to use some other abilities in between to make up the time. But don't worry, that's what this video is here for. So now that you know the basic combos and how tech overrides work and how Blazing Bolts can have its cooldown reduced, let's add some more abilities in. Next to go on the quick bar is Heatseeker Missiles, Rail Shot and Electronet. Electronet is a cool ability that damages your target over time while applying debuffs. It's just good general practice to use this ability on cooldown. Whenever you see it ready, just go ahead and press it. It's also useful for slowing enemies down. Now, Heatseeker Missiles is an ability I want you to get used to using alongside Priming Shot. They share a near same cooldown length and should be used together ideally. So whenever you use Priming Shot, just use Heatseeker Missiles immediately after. Do this every time and the cooldowns will be perfect for you. Rail Shot is basically your hardest hitting ability when used properly. Observe on screen. Every time you use your Tracer Missile, you'll gain two stacks of Tracer Lock, which will increase the damage of your next Rail Shot. But don't stop at two stacks. When you reach five stacks, which is the limit here despite gaining two at a time, your next Rail Shot will proc visibly and deal maximum damage. Using Rail Shot at the wrong time can result in disappointing damage. All right, now we're gonna move on to farming this rotation. Let's add Thermal Sensor Override, Vent Heat, Supercharged Gas, and Rapid Shots. So first of all, Rapid Shots is your weakest attack, but it also doesn't cost you any heat. So if you find yourself almost overheating, then using this ability will serve you well. However, it could also mean that your rotation is slightly off and you're missing some important abilities, which is what we'll move into now. Vent Heat will remove 50 heat over 3 seconds. This can be increased to 75 heat removed with a utility point. Thermal Sensory Override allows you to use one move without charging you any heat. I would highly suggest you use this with Blazing Bolts, as Blazing Bolts generates a lot of heat for you. Both of these abilities should be used in your rotation to help you manage your heat. Not using them in long fights will almost definitely end up with you overheating all the time. Charge Gas is a buff that you will gain stacks of during combat. With the use of a utility point, you can have your regen ability give you the buff. This buff basically increases your damage and healing done. However, when it gets to 10 stacks, it unlocks our Supercharged Gas ability. Supercharged Gas will consume the buff and apply new buffs to you. It will increase your armor penetration by 10%, and furthermore, Supercharged Gas will grant you 1% alacrity every time you use Priming Shots, Blazing Bolts, and Tracer Missile, which in turn increases your damage. Always a good thing. All right, so you may not realize it, but that is pretty much it. You've learned a lot already, and all you need to do now is put your newfound knowledge into some practice. But first, allow me to explain and demonstrate using all of this together. Our first demonstration will be our opener into combat. The first thing to do before entering combat is build your stacks of supercharge using your regen or spamming your heal move. Once you're at 10 stacks, you're ready for combat. Begin by precasting Tracer Missile. A precast is just where you charge up the move right before combat starts. Then you're going to activate Supercharged Gas, followed by Priming Shot, then Heatseeker Missiles, and then Blazing Bolts. We could go further, but to keep things simple, that was our opener. Pretty easy to remember. You could skip precasting Tracer Missile, but I wouldn't recommend doing that. Okay, so after our opener, all we need to do is manage our cells. While remembering our combos, I'll explain as we go. Okay, so after our opener, all we need to do is manage our heat. While remembering our combos, I'll explain as we go. So, opener first. Precast Tracer Missile. Use Supercharged Gas. Then Priming Shot. Then Heat Seeker Missiles. Then Blazing Bolts. That's your opener finished. Now use Tracer Missile. See that Blazing Bolt is ready to be used again. Use another Tracer Missile. Now our Rail Shot is procced and ready to use. And with that, you should be able to see how our rotation is forming. 
we basically rinse and repeat what we just did until our enemy is dead. Keep in mind your opener only needs to be used at the start of a fight. Okay, so we're going to go over the opener and rotation one more time, except this time I'm going to use all the abilities I've listed so far. Don't worry, I'm going to talk through it still. So we use our opener as normal. This time we cast Electro Net before we continue. Then we use our Proc Tracer Missile, Blazing Bolt again, and now this time we're going to hit Power Surge, which allows us to use Tracer Missile instantly makes for faster damage. Then we continue with our rotation. When we get to the next time we use Blazing Bolt, we're gonna use Thermal Sensory Override first to stop it generating heat. And of course, the Vent Heat ability you should probably use when you're near 75 to 80 heat. Okay, so with that, the rotation segment of the video is over. However, I would just like to add that it is good practice to use things like Adrenals, Med Packs, and Stims while you're playing Star Wars The Old Republic, so please look into those when you get a spare few minutes. Okay, so next up we have the utility points for the Arsenal Mercenary. Now first off, I would just like to point out that these are not the absolute way that you should have your utility points. Quite a lot of these can be exchanged out for various other ones, um, but I'm going to go for the ones that I've chosen here and I'll point out some others along the way. Okay, so starting off in the skillful tab, of course, we're going to be taking the improved vent point, which is going to allow your vent heat ability to additionally vent more heat, which is something I discussed earlier on. This is something very important to you, especially with heat management. So I highly recommend taking this point for the extra heat reduction. The next point we have is the heat camping. This one eliminates the heat generated by jet boost, concussion missile, cure, and electro dart. Just an overall use of passive for you to have, which can be swapped out for any of these others here that you, uh, that you like. There is one here which actually allows your AOE ability to heal your allies but I probably wouldn't take that, not in uh, not in this spec end. But there are some other good points here to take, so do look over them. There is one here which um, allows you to vent more heat while you're stunned and immobilized, which could, of course, also be useful to you. But the last, the last point that I took in the skillful tab is going to be the increased damage dealt by sweeping blasters by 25%. And that's quite a lot. That's this ability here. Uh, for those of you that don't know it, sweeping blasters. Boom, 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 boom. It's that one right there. Uh, increased damage by 25% on that. That's a lot. Um, and you should take that. I highly advise that you take that one. Okay, so moving on to the Masterful tab, we have the Torque Boosters. This one is going to increase the duration of Hydraulic Overrides by 4 seconds. Now, Hydraulics Overrides is the ability that you use, which stops you from getting... Um, immobilized and rooted and that sort of thing. You basically become like a, an invincible tank while you're running around uh, sort of thing. No one can stop you. Uh, very useful. Uh, so to have the duration of that uh, prolonged is very good. Very, very, very good, but can also be swapped out uh, for something else in here if you feel like it, such as the power shield. The energy shield now further decreases ability activation and pushback by 30%, which, um, which is pretty great. That's pretty fantastic, so you could take that if you wanted to. However, the next point you should probably take is going to be this one here, um, supercharge reserves. And I say probably, I mean you definitely should take this one. So this one is going to reduce the cooldowns of cure and disabling shot by 3 seconds. Now, disabling shot is important to have that cooldown reduced because that's your interrupt and you'll be using that a lot in pvp and pve no doubt however the biggest convenience from this um, is the fact that when you use your recharge and reload you will automatically start gaining your stacks of supercharge this is very handy and um, for when you're about to start a, a long fight or something or if you haven't already been fighting then you should take this pair the next one i have is power overrides now, this utility point is important for the rotation that I showed you earlier on, because taking this point means that we get two free casts of Tracer Missile versus just the one free cast of Tracer Missile. So when we use the ability Power Surge, it gives us a free cast of Tracer Missile, as we know. But with this utility point, it allows us to use it twice instantly so obviously that's much better so please take this utility point it's important okay so over in the heroic tab which is the last tab the first point i'll show you is trauma regulated now this is more of a defensive passive it can basically heal you up to 40 percent of your max hp when the energy shield expires so obviously that's a pretty great defensive and probably more useful in pvp but there are some others in here that you could swap that out for such as reduced damage taken from area effects by 30 percent that's a pretty great defensive too additionally while stunned you take 30 percent less damage from all sources again that's also pretty great so this is a viable substitute if you don't want trauma regulars so the next point that i took is thrill of the hunt 
This one allows your Blazing Bolt ability to be used while moving. Observe. Right now I can move while using Blazing Bolts while I have that point. Whereas normally, the moment you move, your cast of Blazing Bolts would be stopped. And you'd be like, uh, what the hell? And you'd have to wait for the cooldown again. You'd be like, oh, no way. So you're going to want to take that. All right. Because otherwise you're going to get very stressed out. Okay. So the next point I took is Tag and Bag. So when you use Electronet, it's going to give you a boost of alacrity by 15%. That's a lot of alacrity, and more alacrity means more damage. Always a good thing. Additionally, Supercharged Gas reduces the cooldown of Coulter Overload by 5 seconds, which is another one of your defensive moves. So, again, a good thing. Okay, that's going to pretty much do it for the utility point segment on the Mercenary. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. If this video did help you, then be sure to smash the like button and subscribe to the Central Network. Stay awesome and stay safe. I'll catch you guys in the next one. You must realize you are